Let's go to Dollar Bill with uh, with Willard and Dibs. Hey, Dollar Bill, what are you doing? Hey, boys. Happy Monday. Indeed. Well, you know, going going back to uh, to you know Brock and why he doesn't get the love he deserves is because he is the most boring quarterback <laughs> in the league. Here's why: he doesn't really, you know, he doesn't really have any interceptions because he doesn't. He doesn't make stupid throws. He doesn't. He's never overcome adversity because he doesn't get from behind. He doesn't go. He doesn't get down. He doesn't throw it at nine. You know, nineteen different arm angles. There's no drama. All he does is he throws accurate passes to his weapons in time in stride. It's boring. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I'm not particularly a 49er fan. I'm a football fan. This 49er team, they're they're unbelievable. I, I talk I hear I hear coaches talk about complimentary football. The Niners don't play complimentary football. They're dominant on every side of the ball. Bill, who who are you a that's fan of? It for me. Yeah, can I ask, are you a fan of a certain team? Oh yeah. Who? I'm a fan of the most exciting quarterback in the league. <laughs> Who's that? Uh the Jets. <laughs> Zach Wilson. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen next. Is he gonna fold in the pocket? Is he gonna get is he gonna throw it right oh. to another defender? Is he you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. Well, you, and you, it's terrifying. You're not wrong. <laughs> Jets games are crazy, man. They are totally drunk. These games this year. All the way back to the first four plays of the season and everything that's happened since then. Like, there's been a lot of wild stuff. The games against the Chiefs and Broncos the last two weeks. But I, and I know you, maybe you're doing it tongue in cheek. Maybe you're just trying to make a point. Um, and I get it. But if, if he's on your team, if your team, and thanks, Bill, looks like this, it's not boring. I get how everyone else might think it is. I totally get why, uh, uh, like, a Johnny Every fan is probably not that into watching 49er games. Well, it's just complete domination. And if you're watching football and you want to enjoy greatness, you're seeing it with this 49er team. But if you're turn, tuning in a game, looking for a little back and forth and some drama and some intrigue, you don't often get a lot of that. Even yesterday when McCaffrey fumbles, you never thought, like, okay, that's going to be the one that turns this game around. And, you know, Dallas ends up punting it back and then Kittle on the flea flick, flicker, and now it's 14 nothing, and it's a wrap. Well, so let me throw this at you, and, and here's something else, because I think this is right up the alley of what, of what Dollar Bill is saying. And I've heard a lot of people, I think even you this morning have said, this is like the Durant Warriors, right? You're just absolutely trucking people. Yeah. And there's zero concerns about anything on all sides of the ball. And, and I think it's a, it, uh, it's a good comparison. However... If you go back to the Warriors' four championships, all of us rank the two in the middle as the least fun because we knew they were coming because they didn't feel as homegrown. The first and the fourth felt the most special. Well, transfer that now to the 49ers, and I would argue that even if they are as dominant and if it is as much of a fait accompli, if they do get to the playoffs and just absolutely torch through everyone, I don't think you get to the end of the year and feel the same way as you did when the Warriors won a title. When the Warriors would sweep in the NBA Finals, you're just kind of sitting there like you're super happy and, and, and impressed, but there also was that thing where you kind of look over your left shoulder and over your right, and you're like, oh, God, I kind of feel almost sorry for everybody. Else. Like, sorry, yeah. sorry we just absolutely bulldozed your whole face. This is different because if McCaffrey is the Durant, the outside acquisition that came in and made you go from really good to great. It's different because the 49ers haven't won one already. There's nothing yeah. that was, a, and yeah. your quarterback didn't show up until essentially after McCaffrey. So this has a much more organic, still homegrown, kind of oh, win one for the Gipper, get over the top for sure, feel. For sure. Um, than then the Warriors did. The Warriors won one and then lost one and then went out and kind of bought a couple. And that was the, the feeling outside yep, yep. of the Bay Area. It's like, you already got one and now you're going to get two, but these ones don't 
fully count because how could you not win with that team? They won 67 games KD's first year, and then they went 16-1 and in the playoffs. That was a complete demolition of the rest of the association. And football's different, too, because even yesterday, what do we see from Christian McCaffrey? Opening play, they grab him by the face mask and yank him to the ground. Later in the first half, he gets an absolute helmet-to-helmet shot. So there's that edge and a little bit of the anger that comes with being a football fan. And it never, like you said, it never feels like a fait accompli. I was just looking at the Patriots' 2007 year mm-hmm. when they went 16-0. and yeah. And they played some tough games. Because I was looking to see what the latest point in a year was where two undefeateds met. Okay. And it was that year. Okay. Patriots were 8-0. The Colts were 7-0. and And they squared off. So if Philly and the Niners do remain on this collision course of unbeatenness come December, that would be the latest that any two teams ever squared off as unbeaten. Yeah. So I'm yeah. pulling for it for that reason. Not going to happen. I know. You're, you've been pooping yeah. it. You're a naysayer. No, negative I, Nelly. Negative we're taking Nelly. It, we're taking it one game at a time here. <laughs> and uh, I want Philly I'm, and the Niners to both be undefeated at, uh, would that be 11-0 at yeah, that spot? Yeah. That would be even extra sweet. I'm not rooting against it. Philly just can't do it. They're not good enough to do that against that schedule. It's a gauntlet. We've talked about it. I think it's mo- this is going to really grab you. I, you said it's 11 games? Yes. I would sooner believe that the Eagles are 7-4 and four than 11-0. and 0. Wow. I, I don't see seven and four. I doubt it, but the schedule is there for it to happen. You, you don't have to stretch your brain very far to see them losing four games. I think that's a stretch. But My, Miami, Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo road trips to to Washington, the Jets, which sure. is a good defense. On oh, the Jets like, with a nice performance yesterday, uh, right? I mean, against the Broncos, but whatever. Jets games are fun. Zachy Poo looked good yesterday. <laughs> he came he? through. I, don't know. I, I don't mean, know. the defense kind of came. Through. Yeah, but he he made some some big throws yeah. late in that game. Brees Hall ran wild, and the defense he did run wild. Yeah, Brees, Brees is ready to roll. By the way, Brees is ready to roll. Dalvin Cook, that was fun. Thanks for showing up for a year. You're a backup. He yeah. is. Brees looks fantastic. He looked incredible yesterday. But I'm not kidding, man. I like at least two losses on the Eagles' schedule. But let's explore this for a second. I think this is an interesting conversation for 49er fans, and I know what most of you are going to say, I think, at least because we're 49er fans. How can you not love this? Who's got it better than us? Nobody. Thank you. You're not bored, are you? You're not, right? I don't know how you're bored. I mean, I keep hearing and seeing the word come up today. And maybe it is from people who aren't Niner and fans. And Dollar Bill's a Jets fan. Yeah, that's That's fine. a whole other cardiac that's experience. Fine. So if you're not a Niner fan, give us a buzz. Like, is this in some way too easy? I mean, I, I look, last night was, as you said, last night was like sex if you're a 49er fan. There's no better feeling than doing that to the Cowboys. It's tremendous. I loved every second of it. Oh, yeah. But it's not the way that I thought I was going to feel. Rudolph and I got started, and we're doing our thing, and then you're up on the edge of your seat, and then I'm like, all right, here comes the part where Kyle's going to have to do more talking because I'm focused, <laughs> and the Niners go right down the field, and it's 7 to nothing, and then the Cowboys go 3 and out, and I and I, my back hit the back of my chair because I'm like, oh, like I, the game wasn't over, but I'm like, oh, they're, they're clearly the better team. All right, let's see, let's see how this goes, and then a few more minutes go by, and you're like, oh. Yeah, that's a wrap. Okay, night. That's not how I thought last night was going to go. Yeah, it took a little bit longer to get into that it's a wrap spot because they they swapped three and outs. Dallas goes three and out again. Niners with a good long drive, but penalties, and he throws behind Ayuk. The one throw that Kyle was mentioning that was only the only bad throw he made, he throws behind Brandon, and then he's too high to Bell, and they end up having to punt. Then Dallas fumbles, and you're thinking, okay, now it's time to cash in. Right. But then McCaffrey fumbles. Right. So it's only 7 nothing at that point, but then Dallas has to punt again. Dallas goes 3 and out, 3 and out, fumble, 3 and out. That's their <laughs> first four drives. So, And then the Niners do get the one-play touchdown. Yeah. 
Dallas Kittle. though with the answer, but even when they answered to make it 14-7, yeah. it still didn't feel like it was getting away. As soon as they went 14-0, I'm like, Niners are winning this game. When the Cowboys made it 14-7, you're like, oh, this is one of the, like when you walk through a big bunch of gnats. You're like, oh, eh, kind of annoying. Get out of the way. Yeah. And then the Niners went right back and made it 21-7. 75-yard like, drive. Yeah. You're like, okay, see, world back on its axis. We're fine. And then the feet went up. The feet went up. I, yeah. did, I did not wear shoes during that game last night. No. And if you had them on, they were off by halftime. So I, it's fine. I love it. I, I, I mean, you'd be ridiculous to suggest anything otherwise. But if we are here to discuss with all of you what the fan experience is, um, even those of you who are not diehard 49er fans, is there something to it? Because I do see the word a lot today. I really do. And some people. The B are, word. Yeah, it's like it's tongue in cheek. My mom used it. I called my folks on the way in. And I was like, that was boring. I'm like, well, mom, take it easy. You know, mom's, take life's, it easy, mom's life's a little boring right now. She broke her leg and she's on a couch a lot. And so she wanted to be entertained. Yeah. And the Cowboys did not hold up their end of the bargain. So she, you know, she was joking. She's not giving it back. Right. But yeah, that was really easy. It was really easy. Really easy. If you wanted maximum entertainment on a 5-0 and team, you'd be talking about overtimes and 10-point deficits erased and pick sixes and fumble sixes and you know double reverses on kick returns. But you're taking 5-0. and You'll take a dull 5-0 and over an exciting 3-2. and That's Absolutely. for sure. The Bills have a very exciting 3-2. and They've been really fun. But frustrating. Yesterday was a man, an early morning dud. Well, I think that uh, the league needs to examine. Oh, it's not fair. Well, I think it's fair, except for one aspect of it. And, and if you don't know what we're talking about, the Jags staying out in London for a full week and getting two games out there, while the other team travels to London, and and the Bills look to sleep, and and the Jags did not. Gee, what a shock! Look, traveling is part of life in the NFL. You got to go travel to play someone. This one's excessive, but that's the deal. But here's the problem I had with it: the Bills were the home team. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. You can't take a home game from someone and then make them go to London to play someone who's been there for a week and a half. That feels wrong to me. If you want to make it a road game, that's the deal. You got to travel for your road games. But to take a home date away from the Bills and make them do that, I that's to me the unfair part. Yeah, I agree. I didn't even think about it in those terms. Yeah, but it was a Bills uh, home game. Yeah, brutal. Thirty five hundred and sixty one <laughs> miles away, uh-huh. which a little further, extra thousand miles than what they'll do if they ever come here to San Francisco. So, Buffalo in its five time zones instead of three. The the fact that that is a home game is brutal. Now I know the Mexico City game last year was that a Arizona home game. Correct. So. But at least that's close enough. Closer, And, yeah. you know, it's going to be a road game well, feel and, anyway, and, playing the Niners. And they were both traveling at the same time. Correct. As opposed to being out there for a whole week. That is the part yeah. that I think is most unfair. But I hadn't thought about the home game well. part of it. But Jacksonville being out there already for a week, that is a huge advantage. 